Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Feel Good Friday with Church at Home with Rachel. Um, this is take two. Um, I am having trouble these days with my camera. Um, I recorded a whole video for today. Um, and this has happened to me a couple of times now. And when I go to back to play, nothing, there's no sound. So hopefully this will work. If it works, it'll make me, it'll be a Feel Good Friday for me. I'd like to read you a passage um, from last week. I was reading this from Soul Fuel by Bear Grylls, and he was talking about who you are. So I'm going to share this with you. How we see ourselves when the lights are up, the music has stopped, and the rose-tinted spectacles are put down determines so much in our lives. It's easy to think either too little or ourselves of ourselves or too much. Both result in a distorted truth and a negative outcome. Knowing our true worth and identity is key to success, and this verse is very clear. The Lord has chosen you to be his treasured possession. It's from Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. Those are powerful words, powerful enough to transform our lives and how we see ourselves. The truth never should lead us to being big-headed and arrogant. It's the reverse. We know When we know our worth, we stop having to promote ourselves to impress others. Instead, we can draw on the resources of heaven, calm and assured in our status as a child of God, and we can love and build up others. That's how we are meant to live. I love these words of Jesus. If you walk around with your nose in the air, you're going to end up flat on your face. But if you're content to be simply yourself, you will become more than yourself. That's from Luke chapter 14, verse 11, as presented in the message by Eugene Peterson. More than just yourself. That's the journey of life. I really like this message, especially for Feel Good Friday, because there are times in my life, and I imagine in your life as well, as even if you are the most assured person, the most self-confidence, the most, you know, I can do everything. Um, there are probably times in your life, as, as, as I've said, there have been many times in mine, when I feel like I am not worthy. That for some reason... I allow the the words of the people around me, you know, those those teenage girls in grade nine that you you know the click the 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 cool girls, who probably never even spoke to me, but I interpreted in my fourteen year old way that somehow they thought they were better than me, and because they were who they were, then obviously they were better than me, and I allowed that to dictate the rest of my grade nine days. Eventually, I got over that. Eventually, I started to learn that my worth cannot be found in someone else. My worth cannot be dictated to me by someone else. My worth comes from me inherently from inside me because of who put my worth within me, God, God's self. When we are created, God, when we were created, God did not say, you know, oh, the rabbits are great and the lions are awesome and the snake, well, I'm not so sure, but, you know, this is all, this creation is good. And then God created humankind and said, oh, it's crap. He did, God didn't do that. God said, when, when humanity was created, God said, it is very good. Well, guess what? We're part of humanity. We're part of that very good. And when we allow ourselves to know that deep down inside us, inherently, as we were born with our learning disables or our short temper or our really curly hair or... Um, you know, a plus size or a too skinny size body, we are created very good. Like we start from awesome. We start from being exactly who we're meant to be and we work from there. The question is, how do we work from there? Do we let, do we let those people that we give credit, give them, you know, we give them so much power, do we let them erode our self-worth? Do we let them determine whether or not we are okay? Or do we look at them and say, you deal, you do you, and I'll do me, and I think I'm okay. Even though I have my bad days, even though I have trouble believing, even though when I look in the mirror, sometimes I see, you know, the need for glasses, or I have frizzy hair, or I see a zit on my, you know, my cheek, or a double chin, or, you know, or I don't have a chin, or I've got a big or small nose, whatever it is we see, do we allow the world to tell us that what we see is bad? Or do we look at ourselves and shake off what the world has put a place upon us and see ourselves the way God sees us? God didn't create bad people. God doesn't create ugliness. Everything that God touches is inherently beautiful. 
And that means so are you. You are the person God created. Society may tell you that the way that you feel about something or the way that you learn or the way that you don't learn, the way that you interact with people is wrong. But the question is, when you interact with God, is it wrong? Has God ever said to you, and I mean really God, God saying, not you interpreting the world saying that that's God, but has God ever said to you, you are not good enough. You are not worthy. And whether you understand this or not today, I am going to tell you that if you believe that that has happened, then you have, you have been tricked, you have been deceived. I guarantee you that God has never looked at you and said, fill in the blank name, you are not worthy of me. You are not worthy of love from people. You are not worthy of a family that takes care of you. God has never said that. The world says it a lot and way too often to too many people. And we have been attuned, we've been told, and we've been schooled in the fact that we need to pay attention to what the world says. But what we really need to do more is take a step back, shut the world out, close the doors, turn off the radio, turn off the YouTube, and just sit and think about something. You are a good person. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. God created you and said, they are very good. Sit with that for a second. You are very good. Yes, indeed. All of us have something that's wrong with us. Some, some For some people, what's wrong with us is more obvious, um, an illness, uh, a disability, you know, a, a, an inability to do something the way the world tells us we should do it. The beauty of, of, of the beauty of God, the beauty of a relationship with God is that God doesn't give a hoo-ha about what, you know, Mrs. McGillicuddy says, or what that teenage girl in high school said to you that broke your heart. And that at the end of the day, when you're 60 years old is still what you hear when you think to yourself, why couldn't someone love me? You go right back to that grade nine or 10 moment when she said, oh, whatever. She was a grade nine or 10 girl. She didn't have it all together either. I pretty much guarantee that when she looked in the mirror, she didn't see perfection. She saw and heard the other people who looked at her and said, yeah, whatever. We just don't see that. We can only see inside our own worlds. God created us. And God said it was very good. We are very good. The question is, how do we, how do we, how do we, how do we retake that truth? How do we live into that truth? How do we take it inside our hearts and our bodies and live knowing that when we wake up in the morning, exactly as we are, straight, gay, trans, frizzy haired, straight haired, big, small in between, standing on two legs, standing on one, whatever it might be that we present to the world, when we present ourselves to a brand new day, a brand new day with, without any problems yet, a brand new day with filled only with possibilities, a brand new day with opportunities to close a door or to open one. When we wake up in the morning and we lay there in bed before we move yet, we can say to ourselves, I am beautifully made. And we can and hopefully will say to God, thank you for saying that I'm very good. Help me to remember that when I face the voices and the people of the world. You are very good. Take that to heart and trust that that is the greatest truth you will ever need to know if you know nothing else that who you are before you were born, when you were born, who you are today is beautiful. Even if the rest of the world doesn't see it, even if you can't see it yet, God does. You are a beautiful, wonderful person and the world needs you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. God bless you. I will see you Sunday on Gospel on the Go. If you haven't already, go to the link, 
check it out, subscribe, click on notifications. They'll pop up for you first thing on, on Sunday morning. Um, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, Church at Home, please do so. Click on Dude at the bottom of right hand of your corner. It's my little, my, that's my dog, was my dog. Um, and click note for the bell for notifications. And I'll pop into your mailbox on Monday morning at 7. 7 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Western, <laughs> Alberta Time. Have a great weekend. God bless. And I will see you all Sunday for Gospel on the Go or Monday for Thanksgiving.